In the last lecture, we reviewed the second second order oscillatory system, and through the mass spring and the damper system. And now, in this second lecture, we will go to the aircraft flight dynamics. And the first one is the short period pitching oscillation for the longitudinal dynamic stability. Okay, so short period pitching oscillation. Let's first get familiar with uh, this motion. So assume an aircraft as shown here, and it is subject to a disturbance in pitch. Now it's pitching up, and in this case, as a tail plane, there's an induced angle of attack, so there's induced force, lift force, um, on the tail plane, and this force will produce a restoring pitching moment, and in this case, the aircraft will pitching downward. Is that right? And normally, there is an overshooting pitch happens. So what happens is like this. So there's an overshoot, and the aircraft nose is pointing downwards. And in this case, and so there's a negative angle of attack developing on the tail plane. So there is a downward lift. And then another restoring moment allows the aircraft to pitching upward. So after a few oscillations, this procedure will happen uh, for a few uh, periods. And after a few oscillations, the aircraft will return to its initial position. So we call this is a short period pitching oscillation. Now let's look at the features of short period pitching oscillation or SPPO. So SPPO <coughs> is a powerful but heavily damped mode. And a typical completion time of SPPO for the Boeing 747, which is a large passenger aircraft, is about 5 seconds. And no more than a couple of seconds for the Cherokee. Okay, so for you can see there are different types of aircraft. One is very big, the other is small, but for both aircraft, um, the typical period is uh, quite small, so that's why it's called short period pitching oscillation. And the damping coefficient, you can see, is usually required between 0.35 and 1.3, so it's a heavily damped motion. And the SPPO can be produced by the pilot through a rapid fore and aft motion of the stick. So assume you are a pilot. So how do you um, initiate this SPPO? So you can rapidly move forward and backward of the control stick. Okay, so these are the um, basic concepts or features of the SPPO. But um, how can we describe this mode, SPPO mode, mathematically. So how do we analyze it? So that's a question for the next slide. Now let's see how can we develop the governing equation for the short period pitching oscillation, or we call it the pitching moment equation. So we are quite familiar with this kind of table, and uh, because the pitching motion is in the longitudinal domain, and the pitching is caused by the moment, and then naturally, apparently we are uh, going to look at this column, the highlighted column, and it's about the pitching moment M, and uh, it's contributed by one, two, three, four, five um, aerodynamic derivatives, five components, and okay, so let's do five is a quite big number for for the equation, and let's do some simplification first. And if the pitching motion is an unforced pitching motion, which means there's no elevator motion, so m delta e is zero. So we're not considering partial m partial delta e. Okay, and the second we can assume there is a little change in longitudinal velocity in this SPPO mode, which means mu partial m partial u is zero. So we're not taking that into account. 
Okay, so then we have only three items left. And using that three items, three aerodynamic derivatives, we can write down the pitching moment equation. And basically, it's, it follows the Newton's second law. The left-hand side is the um, moment of inertia times the angle acceleration. And on the right-hand side are the moments, okay, contributed by these three items. Yeah. And in flight dynamics, and especially in the derivation we've done in the previous lectures, we realize W, the change in vertical velocity W is equivalent to the change in uh, the angle of attack. Okay, so we can, in here, we can replace the W in the governing equation by alpha. Okay. So we've derived the governing equation for the short period pitching oscillation or the pitching moment equation. And we know the change in vertical velocity can be uh, replaced by the change in alpha. So we can rewrite the governing equation to this uh, form. And also we know alpha equals theta and q is a pitching rate. And then the governing equation becomes like this. And we're happy to, to see this because um, the unknowns are all related with theta, is that right? And so if we put everything onto one side, and so this is the final governing equation or the pitching moment equation we would like to build. And if you compare this governing equation with the governing equation for the mass spring damper system, are they the same? So um, putting the other equation here for the spring damper system. And so for now, apparently, we can know by one-to-one -one comparison of these two governing equations, we can already know omega n, that's a natural frequency, and there's a damping ratio, okay? So the natural frequency, square of natural frequency is minus m alpha divided by i y, and uh, twice cosine omega n equals the right-hand side, I'm not reading it. Okay, so if we reorganize, we can have omega n and a cos c. Okay, so for for knowing aircraft, m alpha is knowing, i y is knowing, m q is knowing, and m alpha dot is knowing. So, and um, we can eventually find the natural frequency and the damping ratio for a knowing aircraft. So this is a procedure. We derive the pitching moment equation for the SPPO and also how to uh, get omega and natural frequency and the damping coefficient. So this is just by one-to-one -one comparison with the, the second order ODE from the spring damper, mass spring damper system. Okay, so you should remember the way, uh, how we do the derivation. So we derived the pitching moment equation for the SPPO mode. And also we know how to get omega n in a, that's a natural frequency and the damping coefficient, uh, damping coefficient, cos c. Okay. So now let's see a few examples. One for the Boeing 747 as cruise condition. The other is a smaller aircraft and we'll see that later. And so as we know, annoying aircraft the aerodynamic derivatives are actually known, m alpha, m alpha dot, m q, and the moment inertia i y. Okay, so you can see because the Boeing 747 is a very large aircraft and the numbers of these aerodynamic derivatives, also the moment inertia, are quite big in the order of 10 to the power of 7. Okay, so actually we're just plugging the numbers into omega n, the relation, and we can find the natural frequency is 1.416 radian per second. And the damping ratio, damping coefficient is 0.602. Okay, so and since it's less than one, so it's uh, uh, heavily damped. And okay, and then we can calculate its frequency, it's 
one radian per second is smaller than its natural frequency and then its uh, uh, period time is 5.55 second so this is the uh, calculation for the Boeing 747 aircraft okay now let's move on see another aircraft which is Cessna 172 also at cruise condition which uh, cruises at 100 knot okay so the m alpha m alpha dot m q that's the aerodynamic derivatives are all known and then we can see the moment of inertia okay so if we plug in the number i'm not calculating just show you the number so the natural frequency is 4.36 radian per second and the damping ratio is 0.625 and it's quite similar as the Boeing 747 you see and the natural fre uh, the frequency is 3.403 radian per second and now if we see the period time is 1.846 so the period is, m is slightly shorter than the Boeing 747 but in all compare looking at these two aircrafts they are very there's great different in size and so we can see there actually the period is very small it's less than 10 seconds so that's why we call it short period pitching oscillation 